And now a message from Discover about customer service and common sense. When you've credit card questions, it's nice to have them answered by a real person, you know, someone who can actually understand your issues and work to resolve them. In other words, what you don't need is a robot. And that's why Discover offers helpful U.S.-based representatives available 24-7. No wonder we call it live customer service. Discover, exceptionally common sense. You heard of this thing, the eight-minute abs? Yeah, sure, eight-minute abs. Yeah, the uh, exercise video. Uh Yeah, well, this is going to blow that right out of the water. Listen to this. Seven-minute abs. Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's The Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and what do you mean my VHS camcorder's out of date? Yeah, all right. I guess it's time for me to finally get into this big new CD and Blu-ray fad everybody's talking about. Well... If, like me, you're ready to find out all about the hot 2021 trends this Black Friday, we welcome the queen of technology at CNET, Bridget Carey. Plus, in our headline segment, the Theranos trial is showing just how bad people's due diligence is when investing. What should you think about before plopping your money on the next hot stock? We'll share today, and then sail on over to my trivia segment. And now, two guys who still have yet to evolve those opposable thumbs. It's Joe and O J J J J G. Nice joke, Doug. Seeing that today is the day that Charles Darwin released his book, The Origin of Species, which is amazing. I've got a signed copy. <laughs> you, you were there. Handed it to me personally. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Evolution for the Win podcast. I'm Joe Salci. I average Joe Money on Twitter. Across the card table from me, that other voice you hear is Mr. OG. The sultry voice of heaven. <laughs> well, if, if you do say so yourself. Yes. I do, as a matter of fact. Guess what, OG? We got somebody else here in the basement with us, huh? I know. Somebody's going to carry this show. So we're sitting back with our feet up. Hopefully. Because from Afford Anything, you'll find her here most Fridays. But Paula Pant joins us directly across the card table. So I finally now know what your mom's basement looks like. I know. We've been working together for a decade. This is your first time recording in the basement. Exactly. Exactly. First time in mom's basement. It's exactly what I thought it would be. So I have to ask you, because people ask if it's a prop or not, Mm -hmm. exactly how many board games do we have in the basement? A hundred thousand billion. (laughs) What two? There's too many. This is a uh, trivia question, actually. How many board games are in Joe's mom's basement. Yes. Not frugal. And uh, I could have been financial. I don't even think you would know the answer to that. I don't, I don't think (laughs) I do, but I do know that I could have been financially independent a hell of a lot sooner had I not had that one particular addiction, but we're not talking about that today. We got other thoughts on our mind. If you're spending the big money, not board game money, but, but technology money, Bridget Carey upstairs talking to mom, Every year on this day, we we're lucky that we get Bridget Carey from CNET here, and she's such a badass. I can't wait to talk to her. We're also going to talk about investing. Paula Pant, we're going to talk with you. How are you? I am fantastic. I'm, I uh, I know people can't see me. I've got this gigantic bowl of M&Ms in front of me. <laughs> So I am fueled up and ready to go. I love how you and I are sitting here at the table and she's like huddled around the M&M's. I am. I am huddled around it like it's a campfire warmth. Well, you know, with Doug, you got to, you got to claim your territory. Exactly. We got a great show, but first I'm excited about our new sponsor. OG. this podcast is sponsored by better help online therapy. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals. You know, talking about money and dealing with money can just be frustrating sometimes. And I know there have been times when I realized that while I'm digging into the money stuff, it's not the money stuff that's the problem. I've got some real things that I need to talk to somebody about, and that person should be a professional. Better help will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours, and it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional therapy 
done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is also available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit their website, read their testimonials that are posted daily. A review about therapist Craig Rice uh reviewer said he's amazing and listens to everything and about therapist christina Liu, a user writes christina's thoughtful caring knowledgeable and extremely comforting she is a way of making you feel like a friend and is always there to listen and offer great advice a new person who just started using the service says this about garland willis In the small amount of time I spent with Garland, he helped me come to terms with things I wasn't able to accept for decades. He gave me tools to deal with stress that I'd never been given before and made me realize nothing is as serious as I was making it out to be. He taught me life is what I make it, as is everyone else's. I'll be forever grateful for my time with Garland. In fact, so many people have been using better help that they're recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Stackers, you're going to get 10% off your first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash stacker. Join over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. That's betterhelp.com slash stacker. Everyone likes a great deal, like savings, markdowns, and lunch specials. But when it comes to car insurance, we know the right place to go. State Farm offers surprisingly great rates for your ride. Your friends don't have to have a special connection or even call in a favor. State Farm has options like insuring your ride and your home, getting you great rates on both. Why are these such surprisingly great rates? It's what you get from them. Coverage that meets your needs. Because insurance shouldn't put a hole in your wallet. Those good neighbors are in your corner. No promo codes, no waiting around for holiday deals, and no sales section. State Farm fits your life at prices that fit your budget. So where do you go for surprisingly great rates? It's State Farm. Because like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. All right, we got Paula here. We got OG. We got Bridget Carey coming down to the basement. Let's get this party started. Hello, darlings. And now, it's time for your favorite part of the show, our Stacking Benjamin's Headlines. Our headline today comes to us from Axios, and I saw this all over the place, by the way. Paul and OG, you guys might have seen this headline, too. With this Theranos trial going on, the Theranos trial reveals investors' questionable due diligence. This particular piece that I'm going to quote is written by Kia Kokolechiba. Kia writes... Ex-Theranos CEO Elizabeth Holmes' trial continues, and the past week of testimony has painted a concerning picture. Mega companies like Safeway and Walgreens seem like they didn't do great due diligence. Why it matters, of course, Holmes is accused of defrauding investors and patients. Their defense team is intent on showing that she was very upfront about Theranos if only her investors listened. And this is the thing, OG, people get so excited about the next hot thing that we just, we jump on board. And the more people jumped on board with Theranos, it looks like even these big companies did no due diligence because they were just looking for the, looking for the big win. More validation. The more people that are doing something, the more you feel comfortable about the, you know, the kind of the herd mentality, right? It it reminds me early in my career, I, I was studying different great investors and uh, you guys are familiar with Franklin Templeton mutual funds. Well, Sir John Templeton is a guy whose very philosophy, Paula, was if everybody looks right, I automatically look left. And it's funny because most people don't do that, right? Most people, they hear, hey, have you heard about this hot thing, Theranos? And they got this CEO. What's interesting is, so what you're describing is essentially the, uh, the notion of being a contrarian. But oftentimes when we hear 
people talk about being contrarians, we hear it in the context of a bull versus bear market. We hear, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful, the famous Warren Buffett quote. What you're saying is to take that same contrarian philosophy and apply it to the pursuit of the next hot stock. Yeah. Do you think that's right, OG? Well, I mean, you just have to look over the last year or two on things like GameStop or AMC or the recent uh, Rivian IPO, Tesla, just the more people that validate a, or seemingly validate a philosophy, the more people are thinking that someone else must have done a lot of work on this because there wouldn't be 10,000 people investing in this right now if somebody hadn't done it. So somebody did it. And it's just, it's kind of that self-fulfilling prophecy. And of course, we see what happens on the other side of that. Well, sometimes, I mean, you look at Tesla, mm -hmm. Tesla stock continues to just roar. Well, not was not not this whole year, though. No, good point. Yeah. I mean, it was at 900 and then it went down to like almost 500. Yeah. And now back to 1,000. So it's just proven to be super volatile for sure. But um you know, it's just kind of one of those funky things. Like when when you're when you're evaluating individual companies or investment ideas, whether it's real estate or stocks or whatever, and uh, you recognize that people buy shares of a company in order to profit or share in the profits, right? That's the whole idea of ownership of equities. And then you look and you say, "Well, this company has no profits. <laughs> like, what are we sharing in?" You know. Well, and, and and that's a question when it comes to doing due diligence, obviously, and I'm not going to really, I don't, I don't care about these companies doing due diligence or not with Theranos, but it also led me to this bigger picture of what type of due diligence do you guys do? If you're going to add a stock to your portfolio, Paula, uh, what's a piece of due diligence you do? You know, I would look for, for example, I'll look at the PE ratio. I will... How, can, you, can you explain what that is for people that oh, yes. have no idea what we're talking about? Oh, yeah. So price to earnings. Yes. Uh, P.E. ratio is price to earnings. The price of that share and look at the price of that share in relation to the earnings of that, the company. It, uh, that it would pay out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you see then how risky that the, that the stock is. So you're looking for... You're looking for companies then that are less risky or more risky, or is that just a measure that you're comparing against... I mean, what are you comparing mm -hmm. it against? So broadly speaking, um, various industries have kind of norms or averages. So broadly speaking, you know, in uh, in certain sectors like the tech sector, it's common to have higher P.E. ratios than in, let's say, the utility sector yeah. or the healthcare sector. So oftentimes I will look for what's the norm in that particular sector and how does it compare? The other thing you could do is look at some of its competitors. So you could look at, for example... Pfizer versus Moderna versus AstraZeneca and see how each of their respective PEs compare to one another. It's looking for the one that's uh, the lowest PE, so the least risky, or are you just looking at it as one data point? At one data point, yeah. because sometimes if the PE is higher, it may or may not mean that yeah. investors feel as though a higher PE is justified based on the anticipation of uh, accelerated future growth. I like a few of those things, OG, that Paul is talking about just to get to know a company. I like it as a data point because I feel like the more I know the heartbeat of the company, at least a little bit, the more comfortable I am with what this company is going to do in the future. But also, you know, when it comes to tech as an example, PE is something I don't really look at that much because the PEs is so astronomically high, Paula, that I don't really care. But if it's a utility company, whether or a railroad, right? PE ratio, I think, really, really, really matters. OG, does PE ratio figure into your individual stock picks? Uh, I mean, do you want me to be super honest, or do you want the do you want the company answer here? <laughs> you're t you're talking about your sandbox account here, so I bet it's much your sandbox account. I'm betting is much more like a uh, casino. Dart at a dartboard, hundred percent. I mean, I think that there's something to be said for you know we were talking about the the concept of momentum, right? And yes, there is some there is some scientific evidence to suggest that momentum is a real thing. But you have to recognize it for what it is. If it's a if if you're trying to make investments based on the swings of of a particular stock or a sector or something like that, you got to guess right. You have to be lucky. It's not about being successful in terms of you know buy and hold or whatever. Like if you're trying to trade on momentum, then you're just making it up. You're just trying to hopefully get it right. And sometimes you're right and sometimes you're wrong. 
But um, I don't know why you would invest in a company that doesn't have earnings because you wouldn't do it if your brother-in-law owned a Krispy Kreme, right? You wouldn't say, hey, let me buy into this. And he goes, well, just before we do that, let me tell you that we don't make any profits. <laughs> like you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't do that. Well, that's funny. That. That's what kept me out of Amazon for the longest time was Amazon was this company that was constantly – you know, spending way more money than they brought in. But holy crap, if I got into Amazon in the early days, instead of being sure. being uh, contrarian on that one, I would have been... But, been, but um, how many companies existed like that over that period of time, you know, that were unsuccessfully un- unprofitable for years and years and years, and then went to nothing? Yes. You've got some survivorship bias there that you're... You know, you're, you're you're looking back with all of the facts, thinking that you would make decisions when you only had a little bit of the facts in advance. And that's that's really not yes. how it would have been. Now, could you have picked Amazon out of the lot and said, I'm going to put a thousand bucks in this company because I think that people are going to continue? I mean, you have to remember now you get everything on Amazon, but before it was just books. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. Like, like, I guess people are going to buy books online, so I should buy some stuff with that, buy some stock. But you know, you would have had to have a lot of faith in the organization and the and the leadership and that sort of thing. But if you're going to throw darts like that, you're probably going to miss also on some. That's true. Yeah, I would have hit on Amazon. I would have lost on a bunch of others. You know, a key metric that I like, we asked Paula for one. One I like is free cash flow. I like com- money, 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 money. I like money. companies that have a lot of free cash flow because it allows them to be nimble. I like companies with low or no debt. Because if companies, and isn't it funny how much this applies to us as people, like you're going to be able to do some great things if you keep good cash flow and you have very little to no debt. Weird how that works also with you as a, the CEO of you. Yes. Right. Which is why I love when you're managing your own money, looking at yourself as if you're a company, like what would my shareholders say about this credit card purchase that I made? (laughs) Would the shareholders like this or not? Uh, Shareholders would probably say no. That that's a bad idea. But shareholders in OG Inc. would have voted for a new CEO <laughs> <laughs> many times over. I also like looking at the last few years of revenues, and I like seeing revenues that are going up. And and generally, if I'm looking for growth, I want it to be I want revenue growing at at least a twenty percent rate. And what I don't want, and I need to look at also, is did they grow revenue? Because this is a place where people get stuck are they growing revenue because they grew the sales force? Like as an example, I've seen companies that will grow the top line revenue, but their profits go through the floor because they bought the revenue. You know, they, they bought a much bigger sales force and it really isn't looking um, fundamentally. The company doesn't look as good as I, as I, as I think it is, but you know what, no matter what you use, I like this idea OG of an investment policy statement. Because I feel like with Theranos here, if Walgreen or Safeway had been investing in Theranos using an investment policy statement versus the hype around Elizabeth Holmes, they maybe wouldn't have even invested in that company. Can you talk for a minute, OG? Because let's go away from your sandbox account to professional money management and the bulk of how you manage your money. I manage my money. I bet the way Paula manages her money, an investment policy statement. Tell me how that works. Well, what you're trying to do is decide in advance how you're going to behave when things go different ways. Sometimes when things go better than you'd hoped, and sometimes things go not as great as you'd hoped, and you're trying to decide in advance while you can kind of sort of lay everything out on the table and there's no stress so that you have a roadmap to follow. I mean, very simply, you're looking at how much money do I have today? How much money do I need in the future? And what is my investing going to look like between now and then? You know, so I've got $200,000 now. I need to get to $2 million. I'm going to save $1,000 a month or I'm going to invest $1,000 a month. How do I need the money to look today? How does my $1,000 a month investing look in terms of where it needs to go? But then you're also setting up the behavior and the rules for well, what happens if I wake up tomorrow and COVID 2.0 happens and the stock market goes down 30%. Or what happens if I wake up tomorrow and, you know, the recovery happens 2.0 and I have 30% more money? What do I do? If you have those kind of plans listed in advance, there's a better likelihood of making good decisions because when you're going to make bad decisions is when stress happens. 
And if you can take the stress out of making decisions because you already have the roadmap, then you're not going to make bad decisions. And once and over the last decade, OG, the question we get asked over and over whenever the market gets shaky, what do people ask? They ask, how do I respond to this? Yeah. How do I respond to this? And your answer is? Yeah. Great investors act. They don't react. They don't. How should I react to yada, yada, yada? You know, it's funny, Paula, OG's talking about with your stock portfolio I've known you long enough to know in the way you invest in property, you have an investment policy statement about the criteria you use about what's a good property to buy and what's not. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. And the, the very first thing that I that I have my students do is to write out that investor policy statement. Um, and it's incredibly detailed. And OG, I like what you said, great investors act, they don't react because that I get that same question. The housing market is doing this, the housing market is doing that, or I get, you know, a one-step derivation of that question, which is, I anticipate that the housing market might yes. do X or Y or oh, Z. Oh, yeah, I like that. Even scarier. I think, I think it's too high. Right. What, sh- what should I do? It's like, who are you to judge? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Like, like, <laughs> according to what? You know? One of my favorite books, by the way, and we'll get back to that, Paul, but just for a second while we're on that note, one of my favorite books, it's fairly dry. It's called Trading Rules. It's from the 90s. I've recommended, by the way, people not buy this book because it's so damn boring. But what's fascinating to me about it is this gentleman impresses upon the reader over and over and over about how insignificant you are. And once you realize that you're insignificant, you you also then realize, I have no idea where the hell the market's going. I don't know why it does what it does. People on CNBC have no idea, or Fox Business, they have no idea why it does what it does. And once we give that away... And we start dealing with numbers, which I'll come back to you on with your investment policy statement. Now, now instead, I'm going to have my criteria about why it looks good. And I'm just going to work on that. And I forget all this BS. And I'm instead just focused on me and my numbers and my data. Because if I'm buying a stock because I think it's going to turn around tomorrow, like as an ex- he makes this example in this book. If I'm buying a stock because I think it's going to turn around tomorrow, he says, who are you to think that this has been a crappy company for the last six months or year or whatever? But today, because you had the thought after your tuna fish sandwich that this is going to turn around right now, like, really? You think you're that cool? You're not that cool. Right. But anyway, back to investment policy statement and real estate. I love the tuna fish sandwich detail. (laughs) I might have a tuna fish sandwich today. It sounds nice. It just, it does. (laughs) It does. We're recording this uh, around lunchtime. I'm eating a bowl of (laughs) (laughs) M&Ms. You you are. And those are also super attractive. I'll be honest. (laughs) Uh, and you see, well, but while well, Paula, while you were talking, I snuck a couple. Out I of did there. see that. I did. Sorry <laughs> I did about see that. that. <laughs> yes. Anyway, but you have an investment policy statement with real estate. Yes, exactly. Where in advance you decide how many units you want. You you decide if you want multi units or single family homes. You decide if you want to concentrate them all in in one city or location, or if you want to spread, you know, diversify amongst a variety of different cities and states. You decide ideally what ratio of debt to equity do you want to hold? How leveraged do you want to be? You know, you make all of these decisions up front so that that way, once once you go out and start looking for homes, you aren't swayed by something that you see. And what I love about that, OG, is that whether we're talking about stocks or real estate, is that when you make a mistake as an investor, because you still will make a mistake, even though you have an investment policy statement, Instead of fixing it that one time, you fix the machine, right? You work on the investment right. policy statement instead of just this one-off thing that you did. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. It's like you're not trying to hit home runs on every pitch. You know what I mean? What you're trying to avoid is the catastrophic error. And if you can avoid the catastrophic error of, you know, take most recently selling your positions, selling all your stocks last March during COVID and then waiting around and going, well, I think this is going to, like Paula said, you know, I think that, you know, this is going to happen. It's like, well, that's not what actually happened. You know, the, 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 one of the Warren Buffett phrases that I like the most is the market will remain uh, ridiculous more longer than you can remain solvent. And so you can have an investing thesis of like, I think everything's going to crash to zero, or I think everything's going to go up a million percent. But if you don't, if you don't have the time and you don't have the discipline between now and then it can still be wrong for an extended period of time before you end up being right. So, so it's important to have the rules of the road so that you don't make that catastrophic uh, error. Love that. 
And it takes the guesswork out. You won't get cut up like these companies did in a Theranos level mistake because that's a big, big right. mistake. I'll link to this piece on our show notes page at stackingbenjamins.com. Also, in our guide to the show, The Stacker, uh, we're also going to have a lot more links that will help you figure out how to set up your own investment policy statement. So if you want to get started on that, great thing to do here holiday week. We'll get rolling on that. Look at who we got here. Doug walking down the stairs. Okay. He's going to muscle me away from the microphone here. Uh, Doug's got our trivia segment before. Hey, before I hand this over right after Doug's trivia, Bridget Carey coming down to the basement. Bridget is the host of CNET update. She has been kind enough to help us with this technology show. Paula, the last, I think, I think this is seven years. She's been doing this with us. Bridget is always so fun to talk to. And if anybody knows the hot tech trends for your home, whether it's fitness, entertainment systems, home security, appliances, we're going to talk about all of them, all the hot tech. Bridget Carey, come down to the basement. Uh, but first, all right, Doug. Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. And you know, just like this show has evolved over time, the father of the theory of evolution, Charles Darwin, released his work, The Origin of Species, on today's date way back in 1859. Darwin's big aha moment happened on the Galapagos Island during a five-year voyage around the world on a ship called the HMS Beagle. However, he held on to those ahas for a whopping 20 years before hurrying to publish his book, The Origin of Species, as we've already covered, because someone else had already come up with essentially the same idea. Darwin's journey was funded by his father, and when he arrived back in London, he was given a yearly stipend of 400 pounds. So here's your question, what was that stipend for? We'll have the answer in just a moment. stackers i'm close relative to the ape and joe's mom's neighbor doug you know starting in the year 2000 darwin was actually on the 10 pound note but they discontinued him in 2018 ingrates <laughs> not that he knows though because darwin evolved into plant food way back in 1882 but before that darwin's dad was footing the bill for a while when darwin returned from his big trip his dad handed him 400 pounds the same amount he'd given him every year. What was the stipend for? The answer? It was his allowance. It was basically for doing nothing. He was gonna get it anyways. And while 400 pounds a year doesn't sound like much in today's dollar, that's the equivalent of about $64,000 a year. That's a heck of a, heck of a, hey Joe, we gotta, we gotta talk, man. Anyway, let's see if we can save you 64000 bucks on hot tech toys. Here comes Bridget Carey from CNET. And here she comes down to the basement for her yearly visit. I was telling her ahead of time that this is every year like it just it means the holidays are coming. Bridget Carey from CNET is back. How are you? I'm still here. Hanging in <laughs> I'm there. still here. Oh, man, what a wild journey it's been uh, to think another year has gone by. But uh, it has been definitely an interesting 2021 so far. But I worry about you, Bridget. I really do, because I follow you on your social media channels and you've taken up skateboarding and you're making TikTok videos. Who the hell are you? Who are you? I, I, I don't know. I'm I'm clearly broken inside and soon to be broken on the outside with that skateboard. I I, <laughs> I feel like I've been trying to take on different wild things. I mean, well, I'm still working from home because that's how our setup is right now. So, uh, yeah, it definitely is uh, opening the door to doing new activities. <laughs> but I like, though, how, you you know, you always dig into this stuff and you've always been kind of a guinea pig with all the different things that you try. And I always like seeing you with the Oculus on or trying different crazy things. But what I thought was really cool is Masterclass is a sponsor of this show. And you're taking like the Tony Hawk Masterclass on how to be a badass yeah. skateboarder. 
Actually, that is true. I tweeted that I was like, I'm not worried. I'll learn how to skateboard. My husband <laughs> used to skateboard. He was like, yeah, you could do this. I'm like, yeah, why not? We just walked into a store, bought a board. And I'm like, I'll just I'll just watch the masterclass. I did have to pause after episode one. Um, he's already on doing ollies. I'm still trying to get my feet on the board. So I'm going to take a little pause from the masterclass just to like first get my confidence up before I start trying some things. But uh, maybe I'll switch over to cooking and like, you know, feel better about myself <laughs> doing some something safer in the kitchen. But I love the masterclass. I actually was recommending it for um, a gift because it's one of those things where it's a subscription service you can easily gift. And it has so many wonky crazy things on there like learning magic and learning from all these you know famous celebrities on what they do it is kind of interesting you just got to come back and do our sponsor eats for us Masterclass thanks you but we're not here this was not planned this was not planned i honestly <laughs> was doing this <laughs> <laughs> we're not here to talk about master class or even low tech stuff like skateboarding or cooking comfort food for afterwards, right? Learning how to do that. We're going to dive into technology and in our exchange, getting ready for this segment, we had a discussion about what a weird year it's been. And, you know, I've been trying to get an Xbox series X for most of the year. Like most of the world has, I know people trying to get PS fives, you know, let's forget about that. People trying to get medical equipment, right? Because they can't get the right medical equipment. And, and I passed by a parking lot full of cars that are waiting for chips on the road recently. It's been a weird year, Bridget. How does it, that's got to affect the whole technology Black Friday thing in the holiday season. Oh, well, definitely we are expecting more stock outages because of these supply chain constraints. The fact that, you know, there's a chip shortage. I think TVs and game consoles are going to be the hardest. They, and what really changed is that Black Friday started really early in a sense that we're seeing the word being thrown out since October. Right. Uh, we're seeing these sales constantly roll out. Target had a thing where they're like, you know what? If you're nervous about shopping early, don't, because if it goes lower, we'll give you a refund. You know, so they're re these stores are encouraging shoppers to shop early. And I feel like we all have to think of... Cyber Monday and the whole Black Friday weekend, not as the start of the shopping season, but more like, do you have your act together yet? Because you really need to have it all together. Don't ex if, if you're waiting to pull the trigger on something, don't wait past Cyber Monday, because at this point, it's not going to go lower. You might have uh, issues with getting that thing you really want. But um, when we always talk about what are the big tech items that you have to get on Black Friday, it's always been TVs. It's always the hot thing. Yeah, that's and always pricing. like the that's always like the trample video, right? The sad mm -hmm. trample video every Black Friday is about TVs. I feel like, yes, you're still going to see sales on TVs, but pricing right now on TVs is the highest it's been since 2012. Oh. Um, and that's because of what we were talking about with the shortages. Holiday pricing, analysts are saying, are likely to be about $100 more above normal for televisions. Um, last year, if you look at your average prices of televisions, and that includes the really small TVs, you're looking at about $360 was the average price this time of year for a TV. And now it's about $500 is wow. what the, the MPD group is forecasting. What's interesting is also that that whole twist of like everyone watching more at home, sales of the really high-end TVs are doing bonkers. I mean, anything that's over $1,500 uh, selling more than ever before. Um, people want these 75 inch or larger models. That's the most popular. Right now, everyone wants to have that movie experience at home. Yeah. I bought my largest ever TV last year because I'm like, hey, if we're going to be watching movies like this, I'm going to do it nice. <laughs> and so expect to see a lot offered. I I'm also hearing some good news, though. Don't worry about that really large TV necessarily being hard to get if you're flexible on the manufacturer. It's just it's just something this can take a little while. Um, I know when I bought my TV last year, it was like three week waiting period. This seems to be like a, a extension of like the home remodel that we saw last year, right? Everybody wanted to remodel their home. It was hard as hell to get a contractor. You couldn't do any of that work because if we're staying at home, we might as well make it pretty. What you're saying is that's completely gone into tech now. Yeah. And I, I would say uh, one of CNET's like favorite high-end models is this LG C1 OLED. I got last year's model, so I didn't get the C1. I got the CX, you know, it's 65 inches. There is some good news. That's actually selling cheaper, the new model, than last year's model by $100. So not that much. In, in total, it's about $1,800. But that said, 
not everything is that much more. It's just, gosh, it already started at a high price. So there's some hope yeah. out there if you wanted to really deck yourself out with the best. But we're also recommending this TCL uh, 6 Series as the best for what money can buy. And it's only $1,000 and it's the same size, 65 inches. Nice. And uh, it's not the lowest price it's ever been. So it was a little cheaper last year, but it's a thousand dollars. But is this the year to wait on the LG or the TCL? Are these prices going to come back down, do you think? Or is it inflation and now, you know, we're going to get used to paying a hundred, hundred fifty dollars more for the TV. So it's going to stick here. I think this chip shortage isn't going to be fixed in time for the Super Bowl even, you know? So oh. if you're like wondering, oh, some people will go, oh, Super Bowl TV sales. Mm, yeah. uh, I think if you want to pull that trigger, you might as well just pull the trigger for Cyber Monday and Black Friday. It's not going to get lower than that. It might take over a, a year. It might be next holiday when things get better. And if you're watching more movies, I mean, I mean, you got HBO and Disney Plus coming out with all the big movies. You know, I, I, for me, I'm like, you know what? It, it was worth it for me because I have little kids and we're not going to the theaters much. So, yeah. you know, it all depends on where it's worth it for you. What, what about audio? You know, we talk about the, the surround sound stuff, uh, smart speakers a few years ago, maybe even going a little too far doing stuff that we really didn't need. What's going on in audio? Uh, I think uh, this is a year where people are really looking to, like you said, upgrade their homes a little bit. Maybe if you weren't into smart speakers and smart displays, now is the year you're kind of into it. We're recommending the Google Nest Hub. It's their latest, their second generation uh, as a solid smart display. We've seen it for about $70 at Walmart. It normally goes for about 100 And what I like about it is that you don't need to have a smart display. Th these little screens that have cameras like this one has no camera. I'm all about no need extra cameras in the house. Thank you very much. Agreed, um, right. But also you don't have to go all the way with something that can play YouTube videos in the kitchen. You can go with something that Lenovo makes. It's the smart clock too. It's this wireless charging dock. You put it by your bed, like a little bedside clock companion, tells you the weather, plays music, and you can wirelessly charge your phone on the side because so many phones now have that ability to just lay on a surface and charge. Um, that's like a little four inch touch screen. But an Apple, they have their HomePod mini. It now comes in colors. I think this is going to be a big one that this year for people who already have a lot of iPhones and they're in the Apple ecosystem. It's on my wish list, at least, because I kind of feel a little better with Apple than I do with you know Amazon because I don't have a lot of Amazon products already. So it depends on what are you, what do you already have in your home? What, where do you want to you know kind of expand that whole like you know ability to play music from anywhere in the house? And then there's also just people wanting to get out of the house. There's the JBL clip uh, and also the JBL Go. This is a small portable Bluetooth speaker. We have our reviewers saying that JBL Clip and JBL Go are the best when it comes to these small speakers. I love um, them. For, you, you just hook them on a backpack, take them wherever. There's also the idea that you can get maybe a power bank for someone. So since we're going outside and doing more, like you can, you know, get a magnetic power bank for an iPhone. It's like about 50 bucks. So I, I think it's about upgrading audio differently. If you don't want to go for that TV, they now have these sound bars that come with Roku inside of them. So you can like amp the audio at least on your television at home and it comes with the ability to stream so that's like upgrading like may maybe a tv that doesn't already have that ability so there's ways to get creative out there that's a great idea we did that with an old tv in the last 12 months we we upgraded it and it, it gave us a tv but was headed for maybe a goodwill shop it gave it a whole new second life and now i feel like it's it's amazing that's cool but you talked about phones fisher price out with a badass new phone oh <laughs> Okay, so what for anyone who <laughs> for your listeners who um who who are going what is he talking about? I I review a lot of quirky products that sometimes are in the tech toy space, and so Mattel, the folks behind Fisher Price, reach out and they're like, "Hey, we got a brand new phone. You know that baby phone that we all had, the chatter phone. It's got that rotary dial. It's got that face with the rolling eyes. Yeah, the on eyes it. in you the front go up and down. Thing. Yeah, yeah." Oh, yeah. I mean, he was in Toy Story. You know, you know, the guy. Yeah. They made one for adults that works as a Bluetooth <laughs> accessory. So you could have this little friendly face with his little rotary dial that works. You know, you can just call him up and, you know, just just makes, you know, working from home less lonely. Actually, it's a real thing sold at Best Buy for $60 because they're they're being quirky. And I think a lot of quirky gifts like this are 
kind of what people are aiming for. So I did a whole review on it. It's a good product. It just sold out so quickly and they keep having more come out in batches. That, that's one of these annoying things too. Like when you find something fun this year, you have to keep hounding these websites because they, they keep selling things in small batches to combat bots who are just buying up all this product very oh, fast. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I have seen it on the Best Buy site if you want to have a quirky gift and actually buy someone a working Fisher Price telephone. But that along with everything else nowadays is uh, is part of the the jam of shopping this holiday season. <laughs> well, let's not just talk telephones. Let's let's dive into just household stuff in general. Security, appliance, tech, uh, lighting. What are you thinking? Oh, well, I think it's a year to get creative with lights for sure, especially for those anyone you know who's still kind of doing remote work even now and again. Um, Philips Hue lights, I feel, are, the, are is a hard one to gift everybody. But if you know the person you're giving it to, it's so cool how they can transform a space. Like you could just change your mood from a work mode to a relaxing home mode in a press of a button on your app. It goes from like cool reading lights to maybe something a little warmer, more relaxing. And I love it to kind of switch your brain, especially in a small space. And they also have these hue lights that you put behind your television and the whole room kind of starts matching the vibe of the colors of the movie you're watching. Or if you know someone who's into video games, they will love it because then the room can just get like all red when they're in a battle scene and it flashes when there's shots fired. And, you know, it just really kind of brings a whole new vibe to a bedroom or apartment. So I, I, I think these kinds of things are not typical things you gift other people, yeah. but I always love fun thinking outside the box. I've had that Hue system in my cart for six months. And and I just, and as you know, it isn't cheap, Bridget. And so I just, Mm -hmm. I think I'm like, I know I will love this thing. And I don't know, maybe you just push me over the edge because I, I, it just speaks to me. Start small. You can get the light bulb, see if it's like your jam, you know, but before going out, because like Phillips is pretty expensive. There are a lot of alternatives. I can't spit them out on the top of my head, uh, but we have reviewed a bunch of them and seen it. So if you're kind of like going, well, is there something that's a little cheaper? There are other ones out there. They just have some pros and cons. Man, it sure seems like watching your reviews of of that on CNET, though, that the functionality of the Philips one is just so much better. Like if I'm going to do it, that's probably what I'm going to do. I don't have a lot of patience, right? I don't have a lot of patience <laughs> to like learn five different systems. I just I want it to work fast. And I've been using Hue in, in my studio when I'm filming. So it's been working out pretty good for me. I don't have to think too hard. And therefore, if it's if it's safe for me, then I'm like, all right, <laughs> bridge it tested easier than a skateboard. That's what she's going to say. Uh, speaking of skateboard on to fitness, I got this new Garmin watch. It's been a, j- a game changer. It tracks everything, you know, my heart rate, my steps, just it gave me an achievement when I didn't work out for three days called well rested which was my, my watch smack talking me, Bridget, because I wasn't, because I wasn't working out, but I know Peloton has had a few bumps in the road. At least their stocks has, I've seen things about Michael Phelps with the Nordic track competitor. You know, I've seen those commercials on there. I know I watched, and I thought this was kind of hilarious. A woman on a rowing machine right next to a river. I'm like, why are you, why are you using a rowing machine when you got the river right there next to you? I don't understand that marketing, but Tell me about fitness this year, because it seems like along with all this staying at home stuff, everybody's bringing the gym home. We saw this just explode last year. And now you're seeing more competitors really amp up their game and get in on Peloton's area. Pardon me, but I've even seen a kid version of a Peloton. It's called the Pelican. (laughs) And so if you want to be like mommy and daddy... They have a little video game screen where you're really biking if you're like, you know, eight years old. It's adorable. But okay, but for the grownups, for the grownups, there's a lot more out there. Um, And and I feel like you don't need to spend everything on a whole complete system. I mean, they're sweet. Trust me. There's this rowing machine out there. I've been eyeballing that like, you know, puts you in a competitor game with other people and and, and you can kind of be live rowing with the teacher. But some of these things get really pricey and they're like, they don't work unless you get their version of a subscription. I like these machines that have an attachment for a tablet 
and you can go get your own subscription service and maybe turn off the subscription if you're having a month where you're not really working out. You don't feel locked into something that you're paying all the time. Because let's be honest, we're really into fitness sometimes and then we get really busy or we go on vacation and we don't want to pay all the time. Yeah. Look for gifting maybe uh, these services that give people a little more freedom. I mean, Apple's got their own. It depends if that person's into Apple already where they're doing rowing and all these other activities. There's one called Aptive, spelled like app, A-A-P-T-I-V. It's weird. They have like over 4,000 workouts, outdoor workouts, indoor yoga, strength training, and like, and you can gift it for just $50 for the year. So it, you can pair these things with any machine out there. But yes, I have seen better services come out from places like Nordic Track, if you want that all in one encompassing system. Okay, on, I've waited long enough. Let's talk about the game systems. First of all, I feel like because of the fact these things are so hard to get, that when you can get them, whether it's through GameStop or another place, maybe Best Buy, you actually listed on your Twitter feed about Best Buy. I saw recently at GameStop, if you wanted to, if you were lucky enough to get one through GameStop recently, you had to get one that also included Ultimate Game Pass, right? So it gets marked up whether you want it marked up or not. Best Buy has had a deal that you shown a spotlight on where you had to pay an extra $200 to get some service contract that came with if you wanted to buy it. When do we quit being held hostage? And when do you think that the family can get the new game system? It's scuzzy. I don't like it. There's every retailer has this like, hey, if you really want to cut the line and get it before everyone else, join our membership. I mean, the one you mentioned with Best Buy, it's called their total tech program. They were saying members you get to order the PlayStation 5, you know, if you pay $200 a year for Total That's Tech. What, what does crazy. Total Tech do? It gives you product protection, free delivery, some installation, and an extended window to return items. That is wild to me. There are other ones doing this too. Walmart Plus. If you're a member of Walmart Plus, you have early access to some Black Friday deals. And that's like $100 a year or $15 a month and a 15-day free trial. So maybe you could just sign up. If you're really hunting for one and that, and that's worth a shot to you to uh, GameStop though, they have their power up rewards. You mentioned too, like it's, but it's cheaper. It's $15 a year that gets you to cut the line for one hour before everyone else. So I hope you're not busy for that one hour and PlayStation direct. If you just want to buy directly from Sony to get that sweet PS five, they do have some store drops. You don't need a membership. It's usually around, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern in the middle of the week, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Otherwise, people are just feeling like, well, do I need a membership or can I just pay $200 more on eBay? Because that's another place to get it. I don't know if this is going away. I feel like it's stressing a lot of people out. I talked to a mom who divided her whole family up to get the Switch OLED and they had different stores and everyone's on a different website hitting refresh. One thing I would tell your listeners is that you are going to be hitting refresh if you want this and you're going to need a lot of patience because what they're doing is they're releasing them, Target, Best Buy, all of them. They're releasing them in these small batches, like I mentioned, because of bots. So they don't want to put their whole entire inventory on at once and have it instantly poof vanish. They're kind of putting it in batches and you may even have luck. You know, you go to a store and you go, Hey, I want one. They're like, Hey, sorry, you got to go online like everyone else. But sometimes they go, Oh, I can maybe help buy one for you right now through our experience inside. And I've seen people go, can you pick one up from the store, you know, 20 miles down, you know, because that one's available, you know, and and so I've seen that work out for people. You have to be patient and creative, but it is it is not fun right now. And I would say don't expect some special sale to be a, a, a great day. I think if you grab one, you just you just grab it and go because I don't. And, and also another tip, be signed up ahead of time on these websites like Best Buy and Target. Have your username, your account already logged in because minutes matter because it could be in your cart one minute and gone the next. I had one in my cart at Walmart and I just didn't trust it because Walmart had so many, as you know, so many third party resellers that I didn't realize it was the real thing until it was gone. I sat on it. I sat on it and I'm like, is this real? I think this is a scam. It certainly looks like a scam and it was real and I missed out. But what is your team hearing about when is this or are you hearing anything, Bridget, about when this shortage goes away? Is is this just the year we say, you know what? next year, maybe we do this. Uh, I don't think the shortage is going away uh, for the first quarter of next year, even, you know, like I think for a little while, at least until next year. But 
you could not be so glum about maybe not getting that perfect edition that you wanted. Like people are trying to get a white version of the Switch OLED. Come on, give me a break. Don't be so picky. You right. know, there or are the other Halo. versions of the X. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There are other versions of the Xbox that are good for some gamers, but it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, right? Uh, you can also think differently about giving someone a new type of gaming experience. Like you can turn your phone into a game controller with these cases that give you the game buttons. And if there's someone who's already into Xbox, well, there's Xbox cloud games that they can play on their phone. Apple has their Apple Arcade and these essentially controllers that attach to the phone, whether it's Android or iPhone, they go from anywhere between like 55 to $100. It's another way to give someone a different kind of fun if you can't score the big system. Yeah. Well, and as much as we're on the go, starting up again, and life slowly begins returning to normal, I can imagine for a lot of people taking it with you is going to be maybe the future. Bridget, I wish you enjoyed what you did. That's what I, that's what's frustrating about these interviews is you clearly aren't into this stuff at all. What, what new stuff's coming up from you at CNET? What are you working on now? I'm in the middle of uh, testing out this new product from Amazon that is by invite only. It is called the Amazon Glow. It is something that helps kids, little kids, like five-year-olds talk to their relatives who are far away by playing games. So it's not just video chatting, it's video chatting while reading stories, video chatting while playing card games, you know, all on this projection. It's wild. And to me, if I'm sitting here going, it's $250, it's a lot of money for something to give a little kid, but it's just making my parents, their grandparents yeah. just, just light up with the ability to play in a way because they're in Florida. I'm over in the New York area. It's just we're, we're, we're not seeing each other. It seems like it's more and a I'm present saying, for them than it is for the kids, really. You know, it's a little bit of both because I know that they've both been missing each other and we're not going to see each other for Thanksgiving this time. So I feel like, wow, this is a whole new twist on a game system. We're talking about game systems for us, you know, grownups. But, you know, little kids can now tap into something new you know they're, they're playing with read-alongs and tic-tac-toes and and other kinds of puzzle matching games and and they just can't get enough of it so i'm kind of thinking hmm, we have a new category here what are we going to call this <laughs> we're going to post links to bridget's work at cnet we'll post links to as many of the cnet reviews as we can find for all the products bridget talked about today and also maybe to your tiktok page so we can watch you uh, skateboard Oh, Lordy. Bridget Carey, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with us again. Always ha Happy fun. Thanksgiving. Thanks, <laughs> Same to you. Happy Thanksgiving. This is Scott from California. When I'm not hiking at national parks, I'm stacking Benjamins. Big thanks to Bridget for hanging out with us. I love it when she's here every year. How about that badass Fisher Price phone, Paula? I mean, it's adorable. <laughs> I mean, seriously. In my house, people think that Cheryl and I are quirky already with our decorating ideas. <laughs> the Fisher-Price phone, I think, would fit what? right in here. That doesn't get out, does it, to you guys? What gets out to us? That you're quirky. Oh. Usually, we just talk about that behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where you were going with that. Paul, are you going to have the Fisher-Price phone? I mean, it's freaking adorable. If, if I needed a landline, that would be the one to get. What about the exercise machine? She talked about the fact that, you know, Peloton has a bunch of competitors, the Nordic track, the rowing machines. I mean, I don't have the space for one, but I do really appreciate that rowing, stationary rowing is coming back in vogue. It's my favorite of the various cardio machines. It's a full body workout. What about like and you get to sit down? What about like going outside and running? <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> Barf. Gross. Uh, OG. I uh, like my knees. Big tech you're hoping to get this year. I just got a new MacBook. Oh yeah, uh, for work. Uh, no, I, I mean we kind of went a little hog wild last year. Kids got phones and and uh, yeah, you're pretty uh, hooked up. I want the that new Xboxes. I want that Xbox that you got. I'll sell you one. You heard what? You know. How bad do you want? It? I know. I I could easily buy one right now, but the fifty percent markup or seventy percent markup to buy one. Yeah, I'll only mark it up forty percent. Yes, and that's why it's we're friends. Gently used. <laughs> Hey, let's take out the magnifying glass and help somebody do better with their money. Today's hotline call comes to us courtesy of magnifymoney.com. Paul, you know what happens when you go to stackingbenjamins.com slash magnifymoney? You find out that the products and services you use every day are nowhere near the best in class. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? They, over 92%, see, I don't know what to say when somebody gets it right. 
Somebody gets it right. I have no idea. Oh, I, I, how many times have I heard you say that? Over 92% of the products available online all ranked head to head at Magnify Money. Go to stackybenjamins.com slash Magnify Money. Whether it's CD rates, which you think if interest rates start coming up, we'll finally maybe see some CD rates that are worth talking about. Money markets, savings accounts, checking accounts, all compared at uh, Magnify Money. Today, we're going to help Doug magnify his money. Not that Doug, this Doug. Hey, Joe and OG, I've been listening for a couple of years and I'm concerned a little learning may have occurred during this time. At the risk of that continuing to happen, I have a question about safe, medium term investment options. You guys often talk about investing for the long term with a diversified portfolio, but what's the best investing plan for keeping money relatively safe and getting some return over the next five to seven years? I'm thinking CDs, money market accounts, high yield savings accounts. What other options are available? As for the shirt, I'm not picky. Just send me what you've got, and if it's too big, I'll give it to my daughter. Thanks a bunch. See ya. Hey, thanks for the question, Doug. And uh, once again, we will send you a code and uh, you get to pick out how big you want the shirt pick whatever to Whatever shirt you want. If you whatever want it, size makes you happy. Yes. If you want the shirt for you, for your daughter, you don't even have to tell us. Maybe he needs an aspirational size. It's, oh, is aspirational size bigger or smaller? Depends on your goals. It, do, it, it Man, it, does. it absolutely does. Yes. Yep. Because uh, at this particular moment, while I'm feasting on Paula's M and M's, pa- Paula's M and M's, <laughs> they're actually my M and M's that Paula has in front of her. Exactly, she's absconded them. Yes, yes, um, Get them. I guess. Yeah, I might have a story about that for the well later. Anyway, <laughs> but Doug's like, "What does this have to do with me?" Uh, OG, what do you think about that? That five to seven year time frame is really tough. Well, not really. I don't think so. I think that uh, if you've got a seven year time horizon, that's perfectly fine for. For equities. Five? As you get closer to five? Yeah. As you get closer to five, no, not so much. I mean, really, the only thing that you can invest in that's short term is some sort of fixed income, you know, whether that's government bonds or corporate bonds, you know, that basically you're lending money to the government or to the or- different organizations. All the rage today are inflation bonds. So you could go get some I bonds uh, or an inflation protected bond fund. All sorts of companies have those. But if you've got seven years, I think you can stretch it and and invest like you normally would. And then as you get closer to that four-year mark, kind of downshift a little bit. That would be my preference. You're, I mean, the, the reality is, is that there's not any great return short-term things. Yeah, Those two things are diametrically opposed. And the word high yield is just a make-believe word that banks use because there's no such thing right now. You're getting 0.4 in your savings account. It's just, you know, Those nobody in the world calls that high yield. Inflation protected bonds that, uh, that, yeah, high yield's like a euphemism. Not as crappy as our other account yield. They should call it that maybe. That stuff, Doug, that um, the inflation protected bonds that OG's talking about, you'll find those, they call them tips. Uh, often you'll see the word tips, that's treasury inflation protected securities. So you'll hear that jargon when you're looking at the iBond funds. Paula, other thoughts you like for five to seven years? Maybe a little Bitcoin? (laughs) Uh, The first thing that came to mind when I heard the question was bonds. The second thing that came to mind was that he could, depending on how much money there is, divide up that money into different chunks. So let's just say we're talking about $10,000. He could put 3,000 of that into equities I don't we'll say 3,000 into bonds, yeah. 3,000 in, in cash in a quote unquote high yield savings account. Yeah. Right. And so you could, if you've got one chunk of money, you could sort of split it up in a few different ways. Yeah. It's not all or nothing. Yeah, exactly. Is this a place, OG, where maybe a balance fund, you know, we hear about these balance funds as stocks and bonds, that that might be a nice fit. Well, is balance fund, not just what Paula just said. It is, but you get to buy it one time instead of one splitting it up. Thing. You just buy yeah. one thing and it's stocks and bonds. Yeah, I, you know, I would also look at this as another lesson in the importance of having equities in your portfolio for a very long time. Because, you know, let's say let's let's kind of turn this around and say that you're not with a five or seven year time horizon, or maybe that that's what you think you have because you're 55 and you think you might retire at 62, and you say, "Well, I got to be conservative," or you are retired and you say, I, "Now I need to be conservative. I need to put my money in this short term stuff because I'm retired." You know, if you have a million dollars in the bank, 
like in the bank bank, you're going to get four or $5,000 a year of interest. If that same million dollars is sitting in your S&P 500 fund, you're going to get $18,000 of dividends mm. plus appreciation. Now you got there's a trade-off, right? There's volatility and all that sort of stuff. But if you think about your retirement and you think about this kind of time horizon as, you know, this 30 year path, just all you have to do is look back 30 years ago to see what, you know, what was, what was the stock market at 30 years ago? And what did that person have to do over that 30 year period in order to get all those results? And the answer is nothing. Just hang yeah, out. So Doug OG's recommending you go back 30 years and build go them back out 30 years and redo it again. No, I'm just saying like, work off the dividends you know, we get wrapped up. No, I'm just saying like we get wrapped up in these time horizons that are that are sometimes artificial. You know, if you've got a project, let's say, for example, I've got college. I've got a freshman in high school. I'm pretty certain he's going to go to school in four years to college. Time horizon checks. If you're a retiree or somebody who th- is thinking about retiring, you're like, oh, I'm 55. I've got seven years. No, you have 45 years. You need one of your years of money in seven years from yeah. now which means you, you know, one small percentage of your money needs to be for seven years and the rest of it needs to be for 45 years. Keep going toward so. those, those later years. You know, when he was talking, that was also a question I had is the likelihood that he will need the money at X date. Cause he didn't, he didn't define exactly what this is for, but if that date's movable and he's okay with the additional risk that he would take with equities, so it could be seven years away, then I'm with OG as long as he's not disappointed that if we have a downturn between now and then. This reminds me of the quote from J.L. Collins where he says, flexibility is the only true security. Hmm. And so let's say hypothetically that this goal in five to seven years is that he wants to buy a home at that time or he wants to use it to buy a second home or something like that. If that is a movable goal, meaning you know, if things work out well, he'll buy a home in five to seven years. If things don't, he'll continue to rent until yeah. the yeah. market improves. If that's a movable goal, then you may as well take the risk. Then great. Absolutely do it. But if it's college, to OG's point, you probably need a balanced portfolio. Yeah. Great question, Doug. Thanks for the question. If you've got a question for us and also want to brag about what size t-shirt you wear, head to stackingbenjamins.com slash voicemail. And uh, you know, if you're brave enough, like Doug was, to ask us a question, we will give you a code for some swag. What a nice trade-off that is. And Doug, congratulations on learning something. That's awesome. Uh, I think that's going to do it for today, guys. We have so many people to thank. Uh, If this is your first time here joining us, welcome to the party. And this is a great time to hit subscribe or follow wherever you follow us or are subscribing to us. If you want to hear a longer version of my discussion with Bridget Carey, we have a YouTube channel, a small YouTube channel, but we have an extended play discussion with Bridget and I chatting for a little longer, head to YouTube, put Stacking Benjamins in the search feature, and you'll find our channel and you can subscribe to that. We have longer interviews with most of our guests than uh, we have time for here. And again, if you want to really dive into any of these topics, uh, subscribe to the newsletter, The Stacker, stackingbenjamins.com slash stacker. Paula, thanks for carrying the show. No problem. Thanks for supplying me with (laughs) M&Ms. Uh, Paula, I heard a rumor Mm -hmm. that you have a podcast of your own. The rumors may be true. Shut the front door. May be true. Oh, is the front door open? (laughs) (laughs) And there's Paula. (laughs) Uh, I do have a podcast. It's called Afford Anything. Oh, good name. Because you can afford anything, but not everything. That's the premise of the podcast. Oh, gee, you've quoted that a few times. I'm a bigger fan of affording everything. So (laughs) afford absolutely everything. It's aspirational. I would like to afford everything. Yes. Welcome to OG's more podcast. M O A R. More. (laughs) More. (laughs) Anyway. So on the afford anything podcast, I talk to Mr. Money Mustache, the modern founder of the financial independence movement, or at least the modern reviver of the movement. Yeah. I kind of feel like Vicky Robin is grandma. Right. And, Pete, Mr. Money Mustache's dad. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So Pete and I, we recorded this conversation in person. We're in the same room, which which always makes for a more vibrant conversation because, you know, we were like, this isn't going to be a stodgy formal interview. We're just going to hang out and hit record while we do. And drink. And drink. Yes. 
I was trying not to bring that up. But yes, yes, uh, that also takes place. So if you know, um, Drunk History, are you familiar with that yes. brand? Yeah. So it's like the drunk history of financial independence and personal finance. Drunk finance. Maybe we got to make that podcast a thing, guys. Drunk finance. That's what this was. What it was think? drunk finance. OG, Paula, you guys in? We going to make a new podcast? Uh, I'm always open to a new idea. Yeah. One that involves drinking and podcast. Maybe. I haven't drank during a round table though in a long time. Yeah. It has been almost a year. It's because of the new platform. It's just, well, there's too many moving parts. Yeah. The live show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm really trying hard to, not that I didn't listen to you guys before. Well, it's been, <laughs> I haven't listened to you guys the entire show. What's that? Did you say something? Huh? What? There's a show. Huh? Are we recording? Shut the front door. Paula, and it's called Afford Anything. It's called Afford Anything. And you talked to Mr. Money Mustache about and values. I spoke to Mr. Money Mustache <laughs> while we were drinking. We talked about philosophy, values. I asked him what makes him cry. Oh. I did, yeah. Oh. Well, the fact that uh, you're going to be leaving the basement in a little bit makes me cry. Aww. So thanks for hanging out with us in Texarkana. We had a great time. Uh, you'll also see, by the way, on our Instagram account, Paula doing her patented uh, <laughs> back bend. Back mm -hmm. bend, is that what we call it? Back bend, yeah. Yeah, back bend over the state line, OG. She's in front of the courthouse in Texarkana where uh, her feet are in Arkansas and her arms are in Texas. You know, there's an easier way to do that. You can just stand at both. <laughs> that's what I did. That's, that's what I did. Paul's like, you tell me now. You tell me now. Nothing is better than backbending over a state line, uh, the equator. I've backbended over the equator. Yeah, but come on. Um, Arkansas I, I versus the equator. <laughs> I did a backbend in the Colosseum in Rome. And it's a cool photo because it's a backbend and then you see all of the arches oh. um, just spread it like behind me. Paul is just one of the many arches. Exactly. Exactly. I turned myself <laughs> into part of the architecture. That's awesome. And you can follow Paula on social media and you'll see some of those, but you'll also see it on ours as well. All right. That's going to do it for today. Last but not least, uh, if you're somebody looking to make better financial decisions in 2022 than you did in 2021, OG and his team are taking new clients. So head to stackingbenjamins.com slash OG. That's the link to their calendar to see how they can interface with you to make those better decisions. All right. That's going to do it. Doug, you got it from here, my friend. Take it away. What should we have learned today? So what should we have learned today? First, children don't want toys for the holidays. They want tech. And now that we've heard from Bridget, so do I. Those Philip Hue light bulbs I've wanted for the last few years, they're going on the list. Second, thinking about investing. Rather than getting sucked into the next great sounding investment like Theranos, build yourself an investment policy statement. Whether it's for stocks, real estate, or something else, you're sure to avoid big mistakes when you begin investing with some solid criteria. But the big lesson? If you have a big idea, don't wait 20 years to put it out into the world like Darwin did. Like technology, the idea's gone, baby, and they're on to something bigger and better. But heck, I still love you, VHS camcorder. You'll always be the OG to me. Well... Not, not like our OG, but you know, like a tech OG. You know, different, but the same, kind of. Neither of you have hair. Thanks so much for joining us, Bridget Carey. You can find Bridget on Twitter at Bridget Carey. That's C-A-R-E-Y. And thanks to Paula Pant for visiting. And for eating all the M&Ms in the house, you'll find Paula on the Afford Anything podcast wherever you're listening to us right now. And to all of you in the U.S. of A., from all of us here in the basement, happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. May your turkey be plump, your potatoes not have a lump, may your pies take the prize, and Thanksgiving dinner stay off your thighs. This show is the property of SB Podcasts, LLC. Copyright 2021. And is created by Joe Salcija. Our producer is Karen Rapine. The show is written by the brilliant Paulette Perhatch, with help from Joe and Doc G from the Earn and Invest podcast. Know how I know how brilliant Paulette is? She wrote the words I'm reading right now. While she's not putting awesome words in my mouth, she helps writers power their work and businesses power their words. See how she can help you at thatwriterpaulette.com. After you listen to our show, check out our show notes page written by our website manager and blog editor, Brooke Miller. 
Brooke and Joe also collaborate on a guide to the show and with lots of extras we couldn't include on today's podcast. Heck, they'll also throw in some life money lessons from Joe, and it's all free. It's called The Stacker, and you'll find it at stackingbenjamins.com forward slash stacker. Once we get all of this goodness bottled up, it goes over to our engineer, the amazing Steve Stewart, who helps the rest of our team sound nearly as good as I do right now. Want to talk about the show later? Mom's friend Gertrude is our social media coordinator and room mother in our Facebook group, The Basement. So say hello when you see us posting online. Here's a weird fact. She and Tina Eichenberg are never in the same room at the same time. To join all The Basement fun with other stackers, type stackingbenjamins.com slash basement. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, leaving you with this safety tip. Don't substitute your gym's spin class with your dryer's spin cycle. Believe it or not, they are not the same. Welcome to the after show. As, as you were eating these M&Ms, Paula, I was thinking of, you know, I'm getting ready to, uh, we're getting ready to travel for tomorrow is Thanksgiving in the United States. Mm -hmm. Uh, For those of you outside the United States, it is a day called Thursday, (laughs) very (laughs) special day. Well, depending on where uh, they are in the international dateline, it may or may not be Thursday. It may not be. That's right. Some people may be celebrating it right now as people are listening to this, but You know, family members always make these great snacks and mom makes a hella Chex Mix Mm. and we devour this stuff. I I mean, just, and I think she loads it up on salt and garlic and look at more for me because look at OG. That's so gross. So great. (laughs) Every year at this time, by the way, this is the entire after show. Chex Mix? 100%. I guarantee that this, this conversation has happened nine times in the last nine years. But one year, she takes out oh, the tub. And the joke that comes with it, the whole story. Okay. <laughs> We're all excited about the tub. And my brother... Um, can you repeat the part of the stuff where you said all about the things? I will. Thank you, uh, Homer. Uh, he opens the tub and immediately, my mom put a lot of garlic in it this year. And it just hit him in the... It just literally, he takes the the, the top off the Tupperware thing the garlic hits him in the face. You you see it. You see him go back and go forward. He sneezes it right. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and he claimed the whole damn thing for himself. Oh, <laughs> uh, that, that might have been brilliant, actually, then. I was going to say, move. it probably was a fake sneeze, actually. <laughs> I, I know. Absolutely. Nope. He had the whole damn thing for himself. But I was thinking about that. Paula's had the M&Ms in front of her. And the whole show, I, and, and I had to wait to tell the story because, you know, didn't want to interrupt the stuff we were talking about. But I kept thinking I could just sneeze in those in their mind. <laughs> See, uh, my son had a uh, holiday party at, at, in his class, you know, and he came out. I, I picked him up from school and he had like a half bag of pretzels, like rolls, roll gold pretzels or whatever. I haven't eaten pretzels in a long time. And so I jam my hand in there. I'm like, oh, pretzels. All right. I'm like hammering down. And I get about like five bites in and I go, how many seventh graders have put their hands in this? And he goes, pretty much all of them, dad. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Me just, that's fun. (laughs) So Chex Mix is your must have for Thanksgiving. But really more, more, uh, the holidays that come later. Is just, just, just mix. Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever. Yeah. Any sort of yeah. We start party. early though. So I've never heard of homemade savory Chex mix, but I have heard. Are you familiar with the puppy chow? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Gross. Delicious. Amazing. Gross. Amazing. Nasty. Yeah, but not as good as, as Chex mix. 
The bad news is uh, Paul and I have been talking about our diet coaches mm -hmm. and uh, last year with Jesse, my coach, I, I I made my own Chex Mix. You blocked her on. You <laughs> blocked her. I seriously had to for like a week because I was down in the carbs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I made so much Chex Mix and Cheryl doesn't really like it either. So uh, I had all of it. I might try some. I, I might I might make some and try it. We'll but see. but that I'll puppy chow know. stuff is also like that's gross. Too. Yeah, that puppy chow is Fabulous. amazing. So so for uh, anyone who doesn't know what that is, puppy chow is you take Chex Mix and you take this Purina. <laughs> you take Chex Mix <laughs> and you mix it with a bunch of sh like powdered sugar and chocolate and like all kinds of dessert goodies and put it in a big plastic bag and shake it all up and it's. Fantastic. I think it'd be way better if you surprised us right now, Paula. And it really was puppy chow. <laughs> like, oh, it's fantastic. It comes in this bag. They say it, it's for dogs, but it's great. Not it's as Purina. <laughs> not as good as Friskies, <laughs> but uh, or Meow Mix. It's fabulous. Cats ask for it by name. That's right. Meow Mix.